maybe the best game of the whole weekend was LSU beating South Carolina 36 to 33 in Columbia, South Carolina. Uh, let's go over the grades from this awesome game real quick. So LSU starting it off with their highest graded player. That is their safety, uh, Jordan Gilbert at an 82.9. Wide receiver Aaron Anderson at 78.3. Greg Penn the third at a 74.6. Braden Swinson, who was fantastic in this game, at a 72.4. And Garrett Dellinger at a 70.8. And then going over to the South Carolina side of the football We'll go with Alex Huntley was uh, was their highest graded player, actually. One of the best D-linemen they have on the team, and that D-line was awesome in this game. Dolan, he had an 82.7 grade in this game. Jared Brown, the receiver, at a 71.7. Kyle Kennard at a 70. Uh, DeLavon Campbell at a 69.7. And Rocket Sanders at a 69.5. Dolan, for you, in this game, what was the stat that really told the story? So there was two things that LSU had to do to win this game, and, and I'll go into more details uh, on the second part in a minute, but they had to limit explosive pass plays, right? We knew South Carolina could run the ball. You had Sellers for a time before he was hurt. Even Robbie Ashford, the backup, can run a little bit. Rocket Sanders had a great game, but they only allowed one deep completion all day, and that was Lenora Sellers just frozen rope between two yeah. defenders down the left sideline. I mean, just an almost impossible throw was their only deep completion of the day, and that was the part where I thought if they limit the home runs and they make South Carolina either one-dimensional or you make Lenora Sellers and or Robbie Ashford in this case make them throw underneath and make them read the defense and take what the defense gives them, then South Carolina starts to get a little more plotting, and we saw their passing game shut down in the second half. So we've seen in the last year plus that LSU had issues giving up explosive plays, and South Carolina wasn't able to make any, just just the one, one of three on deep balls in this game, and the two quarterbacks combining for a 44.8 passing grade. Stay, stay up top keep everything in front of you against South Carolina, and you stand a much better chance than allowing Sellers to use that 70, 80-yard arm. Yeah, he unfortunately went down with an injury, I think an ankle injury in that game, and, uh, and Robbie Ashford was forced to come in. So hopefully uh, the North Sellers is okay. But Dylan, I'll tell you the reason why South Carolina lost this game. 13 penalties for 123 yards. This is the most for South Carolina in at least eight years. I was I was going back as far as I could, and I couldn't even find and and a some game. really untimely ones too. Not just in I mean, you talk the horse collar on what could have been a pick I, six. The yeah. the the hit on Nussmeyer that could have that should have been a pick six. Yeah, I, I, I literally mean, was going to say so. Yeah, the Nussmeyer threw a pick six to O'Donnell Fortune, called back Kyle Kennard, horse collar tackle Nussmeyer. LSU then punted. Uh, and then South Carolina kicked a field goal. So he lost four points basically right there. With under six minutes left in the fourth quarter, Nussmeyer again threw a pick in the end zone to Nick and Manwari, who returned 100 yards for a touchdown. Kyle Kennard again was called for a penalty, this this time for unnecessary roughness. I don't know if it should have been called. Honestly, he looked like he was just blocking Nussmeyer. Great acting job by Nussmeyer. Well, and anything anything coming back towards the court, right, back yeah. back towards the ball carrier with, with your back from the upfield, you know, they're going to call it. It's just been a thing for the last few years that they've been calling it. And that horse collar rule that you just mentioned, that's a rule that just changed this year. Yeah. In the NFL – even still, that wouldn't be a penalty because it used to be in college and it is in the NFL still that in the pocket, you you can horse collar a quarterback. They just outlawed that, I think, this year. So that that pick, the last one with under six minutes left, that pick six would have given South Carolina an 11-point lead yeah. with under six minutes left. And South Carolina on that drive, because it was called after the interception, so they got the interception, but they didn't get the pick six. They punted, and then LSU scored the game-deciding touchdown right after that. So that's 11 points that South Carolina left on the board and what ended up being a field goal game. So literally, penalties is what killed the Gamecocks in this game. Yeah, absolutely. And it's, it's unfortunate because between that and some of the turnovers, especially the first interception from Sellers, they scored 33 points in this game, which is honestly more than I thought they were going to score. Mm -hmm. And they still left plenty of points on the table, you know, between the penalties and turnovers. And, and it just – it. South Carolina is going to look back at this and just wish they'd play in a cleaner game. Honestly, yeah. it's it and had they were up seventeen to nothing also with their defense. But uh, and this is look the most impressive part to me. I'm going to expand on this a little bit for LSU is when you're down seventeen nothing and you're playing a defense and a defensive line like that. There's two things you have to do to slow down a line like that. One is run the ball, and two is run with tempo. Right, they started. You you could feel it late in the second yeah. quarter. All of a sudden, it was like okay, when they get positive plays, the no huddles going. They they sped up the pace, and that's exactly what you want to do. Because South Carolina, one thing I noticed early in the game is I mentioned how they had the lowest blitz rate in the entire country. That they 
but they came out breaking the tendencies and Clayton White was sending blitzes early and they were they were bothering Nussmeyer so they really went to okay we have to run this no huddle now for two reasons one to just get him to stop blitzing because you can't call a bunch of complicated blitzes in 15 seconds like that you have to be able to huddle up and set it up and two just to wear those guys out and don't let a deep deep you know defensive line make all those uh, all the substitutions right mm-hmm. so th- that was twofold but the most impressive individual player for me was a true freshman running back Caden Durham 11 carries 98 yards two touchdowns and seven force missed tackles on 11 wow. carries he just brought what was missing the, like last week when John Emery was hurt and they just haven't been able to find that consistency in the run game if he's their best running back then they have to play him right and, and he may have saved their season the way he played the physical style breaking tackles getting to the second level just those sorts of things that that's what LSU was missing in their offense just any sort of run game because the run game had to be different this year without Jaden Daniels last year Jaden Daniels was the run game they weren't going to get that out of they're not getting anything like that out of yeah. Garrett Nussmeyer I think he's run the ball I don't know I don't remember I don't think he's run the ball maybe more than 15 times in his whole career it's just it's non-existent so they needed a guy like Durham to step up those are the two reasons their offense got rolling is because they ran a no huddle and they started running the ball with success and the best call of the game was when they ran that draw and what was yeah. it, third and nine for the touchdown that's they they really threw everything off on that play and on that drive when they started running the football and then playing with tempo they started wearing out carolina's front yeah my most impressive part was uh the other side of the ball was that lsu pass rush again like georgia they were dominant dominant in this game six sacks uh pressured south carolina on 38 percent of their dropbacks and i mentioned brady and swinson before and i'm one of the highest graded players 90.4 pass rushing grade three sacks seven pressures on only 20 pass rushing snaps he was getting home every single time 36 percent pass rush win rate in south carolina under pressure only had a 29.8 passing grade in this game with three turnover worthy plays so again like south carolina yeah they put up 33 points but that lsu pass rush was getting home and they started to send harold perkins a little bit more too in this game and it, it really worked out for the lsu defense yeah they were getting home when it mattered yeah right? and you're flustering what especially with sellers in the game you're flustering a young quarterback and you're blitzing these guys who want to hold the ball for a while and it was really really smart for them to ratchet it up later later in the game especially when they were once they got they, there was a moment when they were ahead and they fell behind again we were going back and forth in this game but you're right that was a consistent force between perkins Again, Braden Swinson just had a great game in the yeah. at least in the pass rush. They, LSU still has to work on some things in run defense for sure. Mm-hmm. But as far as defending the pass in this game, between the home run shots that were that could have been there and that have been there for the South Carolina offense and the the pass protection for South Carolina did it broke down in this game yeah. and they found a way to break it down. It was slow and it, it look it took everything LSU had and some, but they they came out of it with a win because of those things. It just felt like one of those games where it was such an amazing game. That you're like, man, whoever loses this game is going to be hard broken after that yeah but you know south carolina's coming though yeah they're coming they're still they're still extremely young and i think right now they're ahead of where we thought they would be entering the season they're they've they're gonna play some more really good oh yeah and this defense this defense is a real thing you, it you, is you gotta feel good about that program even shane beamer after the game was like you you cannot win in the sec with 13 penalties you can't yeah, do it. 13 penalties was it three turnover two or three yeah. turnovers I, I mean just and, and again the quarterback play is going to have to get better, but Sellers Sellers is a young kid, and hopefully he's healthy, and he'll keep getting better moving Just forward. The fact that two pick sixes were called back yeah. from penalties, that's backbreaking. Especially the second one. The second one won the game. Yeah, second I mean, it literally was, was, the game, it was like, oh, game's over. The game was over because LSU was not scoring twice in six minutes no. on them. They, no. they, they weren't going to do it. And then the fact that South Carolina just punted and then LSU scored a touchdown right after that. It's like, yeah, yeah the game right there.